Hey cruisers, I'm Sherry with CruiseTipsTV.com. Now on my first cruise, nobody prepared me for what it would be like on the last day of my cruise. The last day of your cruise can be kind of stressful and to be honest, it can be a little bit sad and depressing. So today we're sharing 10 tips that expert cruisers do on the last day of their cruise. Of course, these probably vary a little bit, but these are 10 things that we've researched, compiled, and experienced over the years that we want to share with you. Now, the number one thing that we recommend that you do, that experts do on the last day of their cruise is to check your stateroom account. Now on most cruise lines these days, you can do that right in the cruise line app. You can just scroll, go to my account, and make sure that you look at those charges, make sure everything is accurate, nothing looks awry, and if it does, you can call customer service if there's an issue. Now if you're not comfortable using the app, you can probably look at a kiosk around the ship. You might even be able to check your stateroom television to find the details of your account, or you can go to the front desk and have a look. Now that leads us to tip number two, and that is if you must go to the front desk to check your stateroom account or deal with any other type of business on the last day of your cruise, that is something that you want to do early in the day because without fail, towards the end of the day, later on in the evening, that guest services desk gets very crowded because what happens is inexperienced cruisers may forget to check their stateroom account early in the day and everybody kind of crowds that area and that is no fun at all. So get down there early if you have to do guest services on the last day of your cruise. Now our number three tip is to plan something fun for the last day of your cruise. You might want to consider going to see an evening show, hitting karaoke, or maybe even making a specialty dining reservation. There are so many different things that you can do to have a little bit of extra fun and avoid the Bon Voyage blues. Another thing experienced cruisers learn over the years is that if you pack earlier in the day, you avoid stress and overwhelm in the evening hours. Nothing is worse than having a great and exciting and fun last day of your cruise and then having to rush back to your cabin and get everything put back in your suitcases in order to put them outside in time or to get to bed. So if you do a little bit of that packing earlier in the day, you're really going to avoid some of that later in the day overwhelm. It's something that works really, really well for us. You could even do it along the way in your cruise. You could put things into packing cubes, pack up the dirty clothes early and stuff them in your suitcase. There's a lot of different ways that you can approach that. Another thing that you wanna do on the last day of your cruise is be sure to tip your stateroom attendant and your dining staff if you wanna go above and beyond and do a little bit of extra tipping with those wonderful folks who have taken care of you on your cruise, you can most certainly do that. Next, you want to make sure that you review that debarkation info. Even expert and experienced cruisers know that protocols around debarkation can change. So usually experienced cruisers will be sure to read that last day newsletter and see if there's anything that's changed and make sure that they understand the protocols for the last morning of the cruise before it's too late. For example, Experienced cruisers know that they are not stuck with the luggage tags that are delivered to their room. If those luggage tags do not correspond with the time that you want to get off the ship, you can change that most likely by going to guest services and talking to them about it, or possibly even looking for a self-serve kind of luggage tag kiosk where you can just grab a luggage tag that corresponds to the time of day you want to get off the ship. Now we just talked a little bit about the debarkation process. One thing that seasoned cruisers know to do is if they are allowing the cruise line to take their luggage off the ship for them, is to be sure that they keep some key items with them because if you're putting those bags out, you're going to need a few essentials for the morning debarkation process. You might need your medications, a change of clothes, your shoes, don't forget those shoes, some basic toiletries, and probably your passport, boarding documents, your cruise card, and a small bag to put everything in. So experienced cruisers know you gotta keep that stuff with you. Truth be told though, I think the more that people cruise, they tend to get a little bit lighter with their packing. And a lot of experienced cruisers, honestly, 
opt to walk off their own luggage and do some form of self-debarkation, whether it's called self-assist, self-debarkation, walk-off debarkation, whatever it's called, that actually means that you keep your luggage with you on the last night of the cruise and then you walk off with your own stuff the next day. Now, if you're flying home from your cruise, most airlines have an app that you can download on your smart device before your cruise that will allow you to check in for your flight about 24 hours before you fly home. Now, if you don't have the Wi-Fi package, for example, or you're just not sure how to access that app, or maybe you forgot to download it before your cruise, don't worry. Go to the internet cafe on your cruise ship and see if they'll allow you to access those airline websites so that you can check in and confirm or reconfirm your flight home. This is something that seasoned cruisers do all the time. This next tip has to be my absolute favorite because I feel like this is one of those things that newer cruisers don't always know about. So seasoned cruisers and travel agents love to share this tip with you. And that is to book your next cruise on board, or maybe just put down what we call a future cruise deposit on your next cruise. Now, the way that you do that is you visit the future cruise desk on your cruise ship. Whatever cruise line you're on, they likely have something called the future cruise desk. If you're not sure where it is, just go to guest services and they're gonna tell you where it is. Here's why you wanna do this. You can likely put down a reduced deposit on a future cruise and get some onboard credit or other perks. It's a total win-win and you really have nothing to lose. In fact, most of the time, you don't even have to choose a date for your next cruise. And the best part is you can transfer these bookings to your travel agent when you get home. Amazing. Okay, our last tip, and this is something that cruise experts absolutely do on the last day of their cruise, is after you've packed everything up and you're getting ready to go to bed, you wanna do one last sweep through your stateroom and make sure that you didn't leave any belongings behind. Here's a few places that cruisers commonly leave items. In the safe, sometimes there's a little carpet in the safe and things can slide under that little rug. Make sure that you check every corner of your safe. Also be sure to check those bedside tables and be sure to check drawers on your uh, in your cruise ship cabin. This is very easy to do. Just have one person dedicated to doing kind of a little sweep of the cabin. And we hope that these 10 tips were helpful to you. I'm really curious to hear if you are a seasoned cruiser and if there's some rituals or traditions or must do things that you do on the last day of your cruise, whether it's to reduce your stress, to have more fun, or to just say goodbye to the Bon Voyage blues, be sure to comment down below with your tips and tricks so that our newbie cruisers can read all about it. Thank you all so very much for watching. And until next time, we'll see you on the high seas.